Once upon a time, this guy called Semiten made a video where he ranks Fall Guys YouTubers in a tier list. This is what he said about me. You know what, Hanky? You are the equivalent to wet socks that you can take off in 20 minutes. Because guess what? If you watch a Hanky video and you enjoy it, well, guess what? The next time you'll get to watch it, you'll hit puberty and you'll have three kids. We created a list of objectives to complete in the game worth one to three points based on their difficulty. Whoever scores the majority of points or the most within two hours wins. We'll see who the real wet sock is. My first chance to score is getting my squad to finish with the most points in round one. The tricky part with puzzle path is knowing when to follow everyone else and when to solve the puzzle myself. At first, it's faster to follow everyone when the puzzles are easy to solve. The next puzzle is more difficult, so I can't trust anyone who's jumping into a portal this early. There was only one guy in front of me, and they qualified after choosing this portal, so I knew they were right. The rest of my squad clutched up, and we demolished the rest of the lobby. Semiten let me know that he was going for 10 peak medals. I'm trying to get pink medals now because I failed to get silver and I failed to get gold because I was playing terribly. This guy's grabbing me at the end. I'm just trying to get my pink medal. After hearing this, I decided to target the other medal challenges, which can be completed in less time with enough luck and skill. The only problem is some rounds only give gold medals. Even though our entire squad got wiped out, we still managed to last long enough to qualify on a survival round. Team rounds can be frustrating because I have less control over the outcome, but there's a big payoff if I make enough of an impact for us to win. Of course, I'm the last one standing, so using this fan makes it more difficult to grab me. I ran to the edge to try and stay out of sight, but eventually got outnumbered. Semi-10 finally has a chance to get on the board here if he can get first place on Speed Slider. He leverages a few tricks to save time, like diving around these corners and switching between the paths at the end. He ties it up at 1-1. One on Pixel Painters, it doesn't matter how much skill I have. If one of my teammates decides we're not going anywhere, then I'm screwed. Meanwhile, Semi-10 was lucky enough to have a teammate who stays completely out of the way, because it's easier if only one person lights up the tiles. When I made it to my first final, I decided to gamble and try to win it without jumping. With enough precision, you can make it across any gaps by diving when there's a lot of space. However, only one guy was eliminated when the wall started to close in, and I ran out of tiles. Semi-10 and his duo were dominating everyone else, as the lack of skill-based matchmaking provides a big advantage in duos and squads mode. He had a lot of tiles to stall on, but he made an interesting decision to leave those and try to mess up the guy below him. He ended up on the last floor earlier than everyone else, but it's almost like everyone wanted him to win. Someone tried to jump to the side he was on, but actually cut off the only path to get there. Another guy skipped the last floor entirely, and the last two had to kill each other on the opposite side. Semi-10 managed to snag four total points in one match. Meanwhile, I'm still on the struggle bus. I found an opportunity to beat Speed Slider without sliding, and it seemed doable with teammates who can play normally. However, this guy also decided not to slide, so the rest of my squad couldn't get there in time. I had a great chance to get a 50% streak on airtime, but instead of playing how I normally would, I wanted to jump on this platform right after it's done rotating. This would be a good idea if I didn't keep missing the platform. I would have been better off just rotating around the map like you're supposed to, instead of trying to cheese it. Meanwhile, it looks like Semi-10 is about to lose on Hexaring, but miraculously, he dove onto these yellow tiles and slid down the side of them. He had just enough momentum to avoid falling off the side or through the floor. Then, he eliminated this guy, which scores a point for doing it in the final. If he wins this 1v1, he gets another two points, and it had the most insane ending ever. Oh no, no, no! Oh my god, how am I alive? How am I alive? How am I alive? How did I just... There's no way. Oh my god, that's the most insane hexering win I've ever had in my life. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Being down by six points was not ideal, but things finally started coming together. First, I grabbed the last guy I needed who was wearing the same skin as me. In duos mode, I have more control than in squads, and I also have someone to save me if things get tough. I'll need the latter of those here while I wait to get hit by ten snowballs. This will set me really far behind, but I can get three total points here if this works out. I can use a few time-saving techniques to catch up here. First, I'll slide on the edge of this ice to gain momentum. Then, I combine my dive with the speed boost from this fan to soar past these obstacles. My teammate finished around the middle, so I still need a reasonable amount of points to qualify here. When I crossed the finish line, I saw that we were one point away from being eliminated. If someone from the lower teams qualified, we could still lose, but luckily that didn't happen. When Semi-10 got to Jump Showdown, I jokingly told him to win it without jumping. 
I don't know if there's any point in me trying to win this final. I can no, there's no way I'm winning it without jumping. There's a fan as well. Go for it. Content. All right, fine. I'm not jumping. If you win this, then you win the whole video. As difficult as this final is to win without jumping, the fan is on 7010's side here, as it blows off some of the less skilled players and lowers the amount of time that he has to survive for. Oh my god, wait. I'm literally, I'm not even lying to you, I'm 1v1 with someone who's on a different tile. This was a scary moment for me, but luckily he didn't get there. I got another great round in the same match, Hyperdrive Heroes. This round usually eliminates about two-thirds of the lobby, and it almost got me as well. Although Semiten already beat this challenge by winning those two finals, he forgot to mark it. I get another point, and set myself up for two more when I get Hoverboard Heroes. I would like to say that the gap is only two points now, but while I was doing this, Semiten finished his 10 pink medals. The very next round, he got Jump Club and managed to beat it without jumping. In hindsight, this was too easy to be worth two points, especially with only one bar and no fruit cannons. Unfortunately, he just rolled this level before I did. We're at the halfway point on our time limit now. While the six point gap is not ideal, I have the advantage on some of the three point challenges, so I can close the gap by finishing those before the clock runs out. My first move is to continue this match and get a bronze medal on Fall Ball, which would give me one of every color. We need to score three goals to make this happen, and I was lucky to have great synergy with my teammates. I fought against three opponents to keep this ball stabilized until my teammate nailed this half-court shot. We exploited their lack of defense at the beginning to score another one. It's 2-0 with 30 seconds left, and while everyone besides me is playing defense, they somehow tied it up. I clutched up for us and made this last goal all by myself. I also made it to Jump Showdown, but this time I brought a duo with me. I figured if this is too hard by myself, I can bring a friend who can play normally. Unfortunately, they also lost. Over the course of this entire video, I've been repeatedly trying to get three silver medals in a row, but Bean Hill Zone is my kryptonite. This is the only level to come out in the middle of a season, so I don't have as much experience on it. I got eliminated every single time this level came up, including when I needed my third silver medal. I had another streak of two silvers, but when I was waiting for the third round, it was too late. Well, I just got three silver medals in a row. Oh, I was going for that. And I got a hexaterrestrial again! No! I caught a break and got hoverboard heroes. This is one of the rounds I'm better at, but it can sneak up on you if you're not careful. Qualifying on both heroes rounds nets me another two points, and they count towards the three point challenge for survival rounds. Despite my efforts, Semi Tent manages to match my pace every time I score. This time, he got the 50% streak on airtime. Another challenge we've been trying for a while is hugging someone with a golden skin. This one requires you to be on a level where you can stand still and have a golden player in your lobby who can get the message. It took some convincing, but Semi-10 finally got through to someone. There's 30 minutes left now, and the scoreboard looks pretty grim. However, I'm only one round away from claiming each of these three-pointers. I have time for about three more matches, so I still have a chance if I can roll the levels I need. The best thing I can do right now is score enough points to get within six. I need to touch this big Yetus three times, so I'll time my jumps later than usual. The third time, I'll actually launch myself and make it to the finish line. After missing hoop shoot by one point, I switched to squads mode. I got to the end of Party Promenade with at least a five second lead, but this is actually the opposite of what I need to do. Instead, I have to wait for the rest of my squad to qualify first. Two of them made it in a timely manner, but the last guy cut it really close. We both made it just in time. Even though I got to the end on Hyperdrive Heroes, we still lost. Staying on squads mode would end up being a huge mistake, as the same thing happened on Slime Climb. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish any three-pointers before the time limit expired, so we finished at 10-16. I've got a video coming soon on the new creative mode, so I'll see you then.